engine has a couple of things I'll, I'll go over. You want me to go over this? Yes, please. Like, you're yes. not familiar with it. Okay. These are your, this is the fuel injection pump, the high pressure pump. Okay? Okay. It's mechanically driven with a cam out of the engine. You don't ever have to do anything to that, okay? All right. That's a, that's a complex issue. That's not a, you just don't monkey with it. Now these lines are going to the injector. Okay, and the injector goes right into the cylinder head. Same process, you can think of it as a spark plug on a car. Yes. Okay, okay. But, diff but different. Yeah. Okay, and you got two cylinders here. Now right here, this is a compression release. Right. Okay, this opens the, it, it allows the intake valves not to close. So if you have a low battery. You can manually turn it, right? You could start it by hand. It, but if your battery's low and you're getting a wrong, wrong. If you come here and somebody holds this open, there's no compression. The batteries usually have enough left in them to get it spinning, to get the inertia of the flywheel. Then you oh, that's good to know. Pop, boom, mm -hmm. and it'll kick. That happened two weeks ago, and uh... <coughs> if it's just battery dead, you know. You know what they did? They put two starter batteries instead of uh, deep cycle batteries. Deep cycle. Well. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. a different issue. But... Speaking, you learned a lot. You're getting dangerous. <laughs> But anyway, this will allow you to, if you've got a marginal battery, and it just won't turn it over fast. These little things start pretty good. Now, this engine has glow plugs. Mm -hmm. Here and here. Right. Okay, they go right into the cylinder head, and they just get hot. Now, they pull, they pull a little juice. They pull about 9 amps each. So, it's a pretty good draw when you're in glow plug mode. And <clears throat> normally in this climb you can get by without them but if you want a quick pow start usually you just hold the glow plug down for yeah five, jim showed me where to press on it before five to starting ten seconds. yeah it'll, here with temperatures and what we're having and had it'll usually start without them some, okay. some engines are more finicky than others okay but and these look like they have been replaced at some point in time see how they're new and not painted with the engine yep and they're just good they're not much to them. Now the wire feeding these two glow plugs is under here. Number 10 wire coming in right here. Okay, I'm, I'm moving it. Yes, I see that. That goes to this one, and then this just jumpers over to this one. Got it. So there's no, there's no one or two. It's just yes or no when you yep. hold that down. This is the secondary fuel filter. Okay. The Raycor is your primary. Mm -hmm. This does the work right here. Okay, if anything gets past that one, this one's here to keep this, because you can have nothing in the high pressure system. The injectors have to be, have clean fuel, because water won't even go through them. Water will blow the tips off of them, because molecularly water is bigger yeah. than the other. And the holes are so fine, with, to make it out, it's hard to even see the, the yeah. holes in the injector, because the pressure it varies engine to engine. The feed pressure coming into here is only about five or six PSI coming from the tank and the pump. But this high pressure pump is cam driven. It's like a distributor. This is, you can't have any air in this line. And this is up to, these are probably about 28 to 3,000 PSI. Oh, wow. Okay, but there's very, it's just like high voltage, no amperage. Yeah. There's very each time this thing fires or it's like a mist. It, oh, it's but it's minute. Yeah. It's a very efficient fuel efficient. Yes, very much. Oh, no, this thing ain't burn half gallon. Hour. You had to hurt this thing to make it run a half gallon an hour. Wow. Okay. Now, when you hear about the biggest people problem people have with diesel engine is bleeding the fuel system. Yes. I People have phobias of bleeding the fuel system. It's no rocket science here and they're Let's not take the air out, right? It's not that bad. Now once you've introduced air into the system, if you have a bad hose connection, you have a leak, you run the thing completely dry with fuel, which is hard to do but can be done. You get air in the system. This pump will not this in, will not supply the pressure to this injector sufficiently to open it if there's any air in the system. What happens is this is a complete hydraulic system. 
Liquids don't compress, air mm -hmm. does. Okay, you get one bubble, and I'm just, say you got a bubble in here this big. The volume that takes place in each one of these cycles every time it fires is minuscule. What happens, you got air in there, the bubble just... It's like scuba diving. When you're, you're, you're 80 feet underwater, the, the air is highly compressed. Right. One little bubble up on the surface is like a huge bubble. Yes, yes. But you can't have a bubble in here. No, I know. I it has that. to be solid. Yeah. And nothing will go through it. Well, the injector won't open. Ah, uh, won't open. Okay, because the pressure is absorbed by the bubble. Bubble. Like cushioning. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Now, shock and the injector has got a spring. It's got a big spring in there, and they're adjusted it. You don't adjust it in the field. I take them to the injector shop. They got this giant machine. They put them on, calibrate everything. The injector won't crack or open until that psi that is set for, which must say three, I don't know if it's this it is, it's around 3,000. So it hits that threshold? And then once it cracks, it's over. Because any fuel going out, that pressure's going down. Because there's no volume. Mm -hmm. There's a little piston right down inside of here. And this is the delivery valve. This is the check valve here. <clears throat> so it doesn't let fuel go back. This piston, in each one of these, it's not really a piston like an engine. It's just a rod, but it's extremely tight tolerances to its barrel and when the cam hits it it just it's like a piston in an engine mm -hmm. it just pulses it doesn't it's not a big long process I mean because it's the, the volume is nil the pressure is extreme That's how got it, it. Mm -hmm. yeah and each time that injector fires or cracks open then it's that fuel gone into the combustion chamber and fires now there's a little more fuel pushed through than is utilized by the injector each stroke, each time it fires. This is a return line. Yeah, I read okay. about that. That excess fuel serves two purposes. <clears throat> First, you got plenty of fuel to make the injector fire so you get all the fuel you need into that one cycle. Plus, it lubricates, it lubricates yeah. and cools the injector because it's right in the hottest part of the combustion chamber. So that fuel process is lubricating and cooling. cooling. And then this returns. goes back mm -hmm. and comes right out here, out here, goes right into here and returns. Some, some of them go straight to the tank, it's with what I prefer. Sometimes they use, they plumb these back to the filter, which I don't like because you can get recirculating air. This one I believe, there's a return line on the tank, Brendan? Yeah, right there. Yeah, it's right here. Okay. That just should be the, like the flow on that line is minimal. Because you just just like there's hardly any fuel going through. Right, here, right. Yeah. There's very little return. Some of the bigger diesels now they've got a stream of fuel running on right. the return line. But, but at this size it's minuscule. To to give you an idea, let's say this engine's turning at two thousand RPM. <clears throat> That's revolutions per minute. Okay, and it's firing 1,000 times per minute. Okay. Two cylinders, one cylinder on the exhaust rope, okay. And it won't burn but a half a gallon max in an hour. So that's 60 minutes times 1,000. Oh yeah. <laughs> And you divide a half it's gallon of it's, it's a very just, little amount, yeah. That, and it, it's pretty, it's efficient. Anyway, if that was, you can get to Belize on one tank. Is that <laughs> is this the kind of information you want? I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 be going the wrong no, 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 dude. Yeah, this he's is, an engineer, he just wants to understand in case he's stuck in the middle of the ocean and he's got a problem, he's okay. got some idea about what's going on. Right here, this is the mechanical feed pump, it's the low pressure pump. See that device right there? Yep. Mm -hmm. It's got a little piston in it. Comes out of the same cam that drives this. It's got a lobe on it that drives that pump. That pumps fuel from the tank through the filter and back to right here to feed the injection pump. Got it. That's low pressure. I think it's injection six pump. or eight. This is the injection pump. And what's that? Pump? I'm sorry, that pump <coughs> below it. The feed pump. Feed pump. Injection or low feed pressure. Pump. Okay. Pump. Fuel. So how often do, do you have to maintain those, or do you not? When they go out, you can change it, diaphragm them, it's not worth it. You have to yeah. it. That is a Kubota part. Kubota. Kubota part? You'll buy mm -hmm. it for half price. Mm -hmm. Kubota. 
Yeah. Kubota tractor dealer was a great one in Bradenton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. In now, Kubota is only the core engine. Mm -hmm. They have nothing to do with the marinization, the cooling, any of this stuff. They right. can't help you there. Right. It's the, the mechanical core of the engine is Kubota. It's a little tractor. Engine. Mechanical core. Okay. I read that somewhere, now, but I don't take away as much as he does. <laughs> now, this feed pump, you may replace these twice in the life of an engine. Okay. And what I do, and there are pros and cons to this, is in the fuel line from the tank, I install an on boat and when I repower a boat. I put in an outboard, best quality I can get. A uh, primer? A uh, primer. primer pump. Okay. Mm. There's pros and cons to that. Okay, some people say, oh, it's a source of a leak. Everything's a source of a leak. Yeah, it's a <laughs> Yeah. You know, as long as they last forever laying out in the cockpits on outboard motors uh -huh. with gasoline, which is much more volatile. Till then, diesel. With diesel is if nothing for as a so you would install that install that in this line right here <laughs> it i would install it on the line okay between here okay yeah which is the filter this other line okay oh, well, they got this one plumbed where it goes from the pump this filter is under pressure not suction okay I would install it in this line right here. Okay? And you install them vertically if you want to do this. The beauty of that is, is when you change your fuel filters, you can prime the system up. And if you've had it open, this is the first point of bleed on this engine is right here. See this outer bolt? Yep. Not this one now. Yeah. You hold outer, this like one nut. and and pull that one you out. You crack that. It's got a copper washer inside here. You don't take it out. You just simply crack it. Crack it enough to bleed it. And then this pump has a tickle lever on it. We call them tickle pumps. And that's about all they're good for. Yep. I don't think there's one on this one. To good. where you can manually cycle this pump. This one doesn't have one. Okay? So you have to turn the engine over for that pump to work. Therefore, a squeeze, a primer Primer bulb would be more helpful. Mm -hmm. And if you've got an air in the system, first thing you do is you pump that bulb, you crack this, you pump yeah. it until there's no more bubbles, and it's okay. clean fuel, mm -hmm. then you close this while you've got a little flow going on so you don't suck any air back into it. Right. From that point, that's coming through the filter, from the feed pump to the yeah, filter. Yeah, to the filter. From the filter to here. Mm -hmm. So you've basically, you've gotten the air, which this can trap quite a bit of air because this is higher than here. Yeah. You've got to get all that air pumped out of here. Okay. Once from here, any air that is in here will come up to here and you'll get it all out. Now that's on the high pressure pump. If from that point, these will usually start and go with a few revolutions of the starter. Worst case scenario, if this is full of air, you come here, you don't loosen this one, you crack this nut right here, 17 millimeter wrench, you don't take them loose, you just crack them. Then spin the engine, kill the compression lever so there's no compression and the engine spins fast, has no effect on the fuel system. You open the throttle wide open, you're pushing as much fuel through as you could, and it'll It'll blow that, it'll fuel come right through here and it'll blow the air come out. out right around here. And then while you're doing that, you snug these down. Okay, and at that point the engine will fire. Unless there's a mechanical problem, you've got fuel that you'll go at that point. But that's the last bleed you do. And you normally don't have to bleed these if you've got air in the system. You can usually get this one right here and get it with a few revolutions of your starter mm -hmm. if your batteries are good. Now, if you're dealing with dead batteries and Yada yada yada, you know. Yeah. But this is helpful when you're. I can see that, yeah. Because RPMs are higher too, you're pumping more. And that's all you do to bleed the thing. Now, and that you have to hold it, right? The uh, decompression. It's spring loaded. So you have to hold it down. You hold it and then let go of it, and then I don't think you can see what's happening here. No, you can't see it. It just. It just doesn't allow the intake valve to close all the way, so okay. there's no compression. 
and without compression it won't fire. So there is no spark, there is no, it fires strictly from the heat of the compression. Mm -hmm. Because those cylinders are not. Yeah, it builds two up a. Uh, two, two and three quarter inch. They're not very big on this end. But, and the stroke is only about this long. But when that piston comes up to the top end, there's hardly any room left in that combustion chamber. It takes all that air and compresses it, and the heat, you know, when. And increases the temperature. Well, the temperature, boom, with each stroke skyrocks up to. 100 Enough to burn the diesel at that or point. Or to ignite. Yeah. And, the, and then the ignition is timed. You don't ever have to adjust the timing on these engines like you do on a car. Okay, because the timing is adjusted by shims underneath this pump. You don't, you don't, once it's set at the factory. No, I don't know anything about it. You I shouldn't just, have to do any, you should never have to retime this engine. On, like with a car, they check oh. the timing on the tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they're all electronic. Right. You used to have but, timing belts in the old days and all that. Yeah, and timing lights, and that doesn't apply here. Because wow. the timing is mechanically set. And unless there's wear, then it's not going to be an issue. Interesting. <coughs> okay. Um, Thermic cooling. That's your next biggest issue is keeping these, these engines cool. Excuse me. Do you want to give me your car key? Because I, I, I think I should go. It's, it's right there. Oh, okay. And those are those cushions are getting wet. That's okay. It's really not. They're going to get molded. Why don't we just bring them in and throw them over here?